we are walking from the Reguliersgracht to the new market, or new market, as we say. Hey, it's me. Hey, you're wearing a jacket this time. Although the sun shines. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice weather. Yeah, it's nice weather. It's best to do all these walks in nice weather. And our uh, maps always face north, so the top is always on the north side. Yeah. Oh, and uh, if you want, you can also do the walks when the weather's not so nice. <laughs> of course. Uh, slippery when wet. Did you know that this canal would run all the way to the Rembrandtsplein and all the way to the Amstel? But this idea was abandoned because it was too expensive to develop the houses in the Halvermaansteeg. The cost for the lock there would be too high. Ultimately, the Reguliersgracht is in direct connection with the Amstel uh, by a tube that runs under the Torbecke Square, Rembrandt Square, and the Crescent Alley. Uh -huh. Did you know the Rembrandt Square was raised with the soil that came out of this canal during the digging? No, that's a bit different when you stand on the Rembrandt Square. You know where the soil comes from. In uh, 1664 the canal was ready to be built along, so that's when the houses were developed. Uh -huh. I really love this canal. It's one of the most authentic canals in Amsterdam. Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. The Reguliersgracht is the canal where part of the Netflix movie The Hitman's Bodyguard was filmed. Uh, was it the part where the car hits the water? Yeah, it is. No, no, that's actually somewhere else. But there's also a car that hits the water, by the way. The Reguliersgracht crosses three important Amsterdam canals. In this walk, these are the Prinsengracht, the Keizersgracht and the Herengracht. Yeah. And about half of the buildings on the Reguliersgracht are national monuments. When you walk here, you can imagine why. Yeah, I would love to live here, but fortunately, it's not in the budget. <laughs> like this video. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the name the Reguliersgracht comes from the Reguliers Klooster. That's a monastery, by the way, that stood nearby from 1394 till 1532. Hmm. Along the Reguliersgracht is the Amstelveld, which we pass on the right side. It features the Amstelkerk and there are regularly markets on the square, including flower markets and antique markets. The Amstelkerk was built around 1670 out of wood as a temporary church, but after about 350 years, the original building still stands. Rumor has it that Napoleon Bonaparte used the church as a place to stable his horse. <laughs> the one and only. Yeah. As you can see, there are no houseboats on this canal. There are boats along the side, and if a boat has sunk, the city of Amsterdam can regard it as lost and remove it. Yeah, sometimes it's sore uh, for the eyes. Mm -hmm. Especially just after sunset, the canal of Amsterdam really become magical when the lanterns and the lamps in the houses come on and the evening skies reflect in the water of the canals that's that's insane especially when you go on bike you can just visit all the canals On the canal there's also the house that was used in the James Bond film from 1971, Diamonds Are Forever. That's at number 36. This is the house where James Bond meets Tiffany Case. Only the outside has been used. 
The inside was shot at Pinewood Studios in England. Nevertheless, Sir Sean Connery has been standing at the door here. That's nice to know. More about this in our video about Diamonds Are Forever film locations here on YouTube. Yeah, you watch it. <laughs> Did you know that the Regeliersgracht is the canal where you can see seven bridges in a row, especially from the water? And the best way to do this is from the water of the Heergracht. Maybe you can use one of the sunken boats? <laughs> oh, S maybe not. <laughs> submarines. So coming up, uh, the bridge you see here is the Cheese Market Lock. The Reguliersgracht and the Torbekeplein are connected by the Cheese Market Lock. And this is only one of the many bridges over the Heerengracht. Yeah, and there are a lot. The name refers to the Cheese Market that used to be held at the Torbekeplein. That's the square in front of us. The year 1734 is written on the bridge, but it is suspected that the bridge was already here in 1662. Yeah, you see that a lot from old paintings and old maps from Amsterdam. Here is the Torbeke Plain. Uh, you can see the statue of Johan Rudolf Torbeke. He was Minister of the Interior of the Netherlands three times in a row. When I did my research, he was uh, pretty popular. Okay, the statue. It was unveiled at the Reguliersplein on May 18, 1876. The fence around the pedestal is also a part of the set statue, and in 2002 everything became a national monument. And a coachman from Scheveningen, who looked exactly like Thorbecke, he acted as a model. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so you're looking at somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That's very funny if you look at the statue. Uh, the Thorbecke Plein used to be called the Reguliersplein. The cheese market used to be held on this Reguliersplein, but in the past this was still part of the Reguliersgracht until 1785. But the square has been an entertainment area for decades. I used to go there when I was in high school, on Friday afternoon after school. Yeah, I used to go there when I was a teenager. In the 1970s it was known as a spicy area. And from 1980 it became more regular. And this is the Rembrandtsplein, and the Rembrandtsplein used to be called the Butter Market. Uh, the Reguliersgracht continued along this square, but was filled in in 1694. In 1785, the canal under the current Torbeckerplein was also filled in. In the past, statues inspired by the Nightwatch were placed under the statue of Rembrandt, but now they've been removed. But the Rembrandt Square is well known for its pubs and clubs and quite crowded at night during the weekends. Yeah, I know. When you go there you would notice. <laughs> you, you would know what we're, we're telling you. We are coming up to the Crescent Alley or Halve Maansteeg. And below this alley is the water tube connecting the Regeliersgracht where we started our walking tour. For years this alley housed eateries for hungry people who have been partying in the center. So when you come out of the club at four night in the evening, you can get a fries over here or a burger. The nearby Reguliers Breestraat is also full of fast food places. Next up is the Crescent Bridge or a Halve Maansbrug in Dutch. Many previous bridges have been located on this spot. Because the traffic became heavier and heavier, the previous bridges no longer suffice. There are different stories where the name of the bridge comes from. One of them is the shape of the water on the west side of this bridge. Another option is the name of the liquor store from 150 years ago in the Halve Maansteeg, which we just passed. Next up is the Kloveniersburgwal. 
the painting the company of Captain Franz Banning Cock and Lieutenant Willem van Ruitenburg is getting ready to march out, or better known as the Night Watch originally hung in the banquet hall of the building on the left. Where the Night Watch originally used to hang has been replaced by this hotel. But there are still two statues on the facade that reminds us of the militia and the Night Watch. On the left we see the aluminium bridge from 1896. The name comes from the aluminium deck that the bridge was given in 1955. The bridge is best known for the 2004 film Ocean's 12, where George Clooney and Brad Pitt play the scene from the film together. For more information we advise you to watch the video made earlier about Ocean's 12 on our channel. The name of this canal comes from the fact that the Amsterdam militia in the Golden Age was armed with a musket. The type that was fed was called a cleaver. So a clovenier or a cleaver is a shooter. Together with the Nieuwe Doelenstraat, the new Target Street, the name Cloveniers Burgwal is a reminder of the Cloveniers Doele or targets. The club building, where the Amsterdam militia came together, featured the night watch. This canal was dug at the end of the 15th century. The city wall of Amsterdam ran on the left side of this canal. This city wall had three small turnets in between and a large tower next to where the aluminum bridge now stands. The city wall ran all the way to the new market, where it ended at the Waag, that used to be a city gate. On the inside of the city wall were mainly gardens and monasteries. Rusland or Russia is the name of the short but wide street on the left. The name of the street already appeared in a deed from 1403 with the name Willem Ruschentuin. Over the years the name was corrupted via Ruisland, het Ruiseland and het Rusland to Rusland, eventually having nothing to do with the country. Underneath the street is a tunnel that connects two parts of a hotel. Beside that a scene from Ocean's 12 was recorded on this canal. A short part of the headman's bodyguard was also recorded on this canal. Here Samuel L. Jackson sails on a speedboat over part of the canal. Wedding ladies partying on a speedboat and then crossing a pedal boat. From this canal you can also take a nice picture of the Zuiderkerk, where the tower can be beautifully combined with the Amsterdam facades in front. The Cloveniers Burgwall crosses the Nieuwe Hoogstraat and the Oude Hoogstraat here, which leads to Dam Square, because there are many fast food places, restaurants, coffee shops and shops. It's very busy here, because many cyclists cycle through this, it's even busier. Huh. 
In the distance we see the Waag on the Nieuwmarkt, the end point of our walking tour. The square is surrounded by restaurants, a number of supermarkets and a bank office. I love this square by the way. Yeah, it's really nice. This location often hosts markets and is also the center of the April festivities. It borders the red light districts and Chinatown in Amsterdam. The Waag in the center of the square has a long history. Currently it's a restaurant, but before that it was a weighing house and a city gate. Ah. The anatomy lessons of Dr. Nicolas Tulp by Rembrandt was also taken place in the Waag. And the city gates of the past was a lot lower than it is now. You can see this by the traces of the battlements near the main towers. Right, and um, so that concludes our walk. So we have come at the end of this um, of this walking tour. Should we go into a cafe and have a drink? <laughs> yes, you're by. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> okay. <Cheers. laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. If you want to see more of Amsterdam, select one of the videos on the left. We appreciate it if you would subscribe and follow us on the socials. Thank you for watching, until next time.